Welcome to this NPTEL lectures on dynamics and control of mechanical systems. This week we are looking at design of controllers. My name is Ashitava Ghoshal. I am a professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering and in the Center for Product Design and Manufacturing and also at the Robert Bosch Center for Cyber Physical Systems, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. In the last lecture, we had looked at PID controllers and how we could go about choosing the proportional derivative and integral gains to achieve a desired performance. In this week, we will look at root locus based controller design. In the root locus based controller design, we will basically look at how the root locus can be changed or modified to achieve the desired performance. So to recapitulate, a root locus shows the closed loop poles of a system as a controller gain is varied from zero to infinity. The desired performance is often not possible by simply changing the gain. And we need to change the shape of the root locus by adding poles and zeros. These are called compensators. So these compensators can be in series or in parallel in the feedback path. The main idea is to change the shape of the root locus to obtain a desired dominant closed loop pole. And as usual, or as a disadvantage, these are limited to single input, single output systems. So most classical approaches to controller design can be used only for single input, single output system easily. There are two main kinds of compensators. So if the steady state output has a phase lead, then we lead, then we need a lead compensator. If the steady state output has a phase lag, then we will use a lag compensator. Sometimes both are used. So the compensators are normally realized using electronic circuits. Okay, these need not be physical devices. So what is given? The specification normally are in terms of dominant second order poles or in terms of let's say peak overshoot and steady state error. So we would like the control system to achieve certain transient response and certain steady state error response. So from root locus, first we can check if changing the gain is enough to ensure that the root locus passes through the desired dominant second order poles. Okay, so we are given some two second order poles, which are the dominant second order poles. We know as we change the gains, the root locus will pass through certain points in the S plane and we can just simply check whether it passes through the desired dominant second order poles. This is most of the time not enough. Okay, so in that case, we can assume a lead compensator. The lead compensator is given in this form. The transfer function is K into some tau S plus one into alpha tau S plus one, where alpha is between zero and one. So as you can see from this transfer function, the maximum phase lead occurs when omega is one over square root of alpha tau. Okay, so we need to choose alpha to get the acceptable phase margin. K is determined from the requirement of a steady state error or the open loop gain. And it needs to be checked if the compensated system meets all the performance specification. If it doesn't meet, we need to go back and repeat the design. Let's take a simple example. Again, we go back to our usual DC servo drive where the transfer function is given by one divided by S into S plus one. Again, remember K and then inertia J and the friction, all of them are chosen to be one. So in the case of this DC servo drive transfer function, there are two poles. So they are at zero and minus one. So S equals zero and S equals minus one. 
And as the gain is increased from zero to infinity, the branches of the root locus will come towards each other and then go off to infinity. So this is the root locus of the uncompensated system. So if I want some other dominant poles, let's say not on this root locus, then we need to do something else. That is called as the compensated system. So in this example, let us assume that we want a desired steady state error of 0.1 for a unit ramp input and we want a peak overshoot of less than 0.25. So what is the response of this system to a step response? We have seen this earlier. There will be a small exponential portion and then there is a linear a straight line behavior. So if you were to plot a line which is at 45 degrees, there will be a gap here which is determined the steady state error for the unit ramp input. So let us continue with this example. So we have this transfer function which is 1 divided by s into s plus 1. We want a steady state error of 0 0.1 for a unit ramp input and the peak overshoot should be less than 0 0.25. So the steady state error is E which error which is R minus Y and if you find the limit as S tends to 0 because we want T tends to infinity so we will get 1 divided by DS GS 1 plus DS GS into 1 by S square we are giving a ramp input so this will give me 1 divided by D of 0. So D is the controller transfer function and whatever is the value of the controller transfer function for S equal to 0, that is what the steady state error is. So for steady state error of 0 0.1, we can choose K as 10. So if you choose K as 10, so 1 by 10 will give me a steady state error of 0.1. Now in order to meet the peak overshoot requirement, we need to have a phase margin and phase margin of 45 degrees is enough. So if you plot the Bode diagram, we can see that the gain margin is infinity. The phase margin is 18 degrees at 3.08 radians per second Okay, at this place. So the uncompensated system has a phase margin of about 20 degrees. We need an additional 25 degrees at omega equals 3 radians per second. And this can be done by adding a zero. But however, if you add a zero, it will change the crossover frequency. And just to be on the safe side, we require a little bit more phase margin. So we choose alpha as 0 0.2, a zero at omega equals 2, and a pole at omega equals 10. So the phase margin for such a system is 45 degrees. So the lead compensator transfer function D of S is 10, which was K, and this is 0.5 S plus 1. So there's a 0 at 0 0.5 and a pole at 10 radians per second, 0 0.1 S plus 1. So in a sense, this is sort of similar to a derivative controller. Why? Because you can see the numerator is like 0 0.5 S and the denominator is 0 0.1 s plus 1. There is of course some plus 1 effect is there. So it is sort of like k into tds divided by 1 plus tv into s. So remember for the derivative part in a PID controller, we had some constant into something into s divided by 1 plus tvs. So it in some sense similar to a derivative controller but not exactly same because of this one. We can now plot the root locus with this example with the lead compensator given by 10 into 0.5 s plus 1 divided by 0.1 s plus 1 and you can see that the root locus looks like this. So there is one pole and s equals 0 and s equals 1 and we have introduced one pole and one 0 and the shape of the root locus now looks like this. So does it meet our requirements? We can go back and look at the Bode diagram and we can see that the gain margin is infinity, 
the phase margin is 53.5 degrees at 4.78 radians. So it is more than 45 uh, degrees, which we were looking for. Okay, so it looks like it will work. So in order to finally test, we can do a step input to this system. So G of S is one over S into S plus one. And then we have a controller or a compensator in series, which is 10 into 0.5 S divided by 0.1 S plus one. And we can give a step input. The step input looks like this. So as you can see that it settled down very close to one. It does not overshoot more than less than 20 0.2. So we wanted overshoot of less than 0.25, which it is fine. And the steady state error is also less than 0.1. It is very close to, it is much less than 0.1. It is some value, which is little bit more than one. So our design, which is this lead compensator, which is D of S is 10 into 0.5 S plus one divided by 0.1 S plus one satisfies these requirements of steady state error less than 0.1 and peak overshoot less than 0.25. We can also see with if a lag compensator works for this example. So let's go back and take this example of the DC servo drive. G of S is again one divided by S into S plus one. And we will see whether a lag compensator can be used instead of the lead compensator. So again, we have this root locus, which is zero and minus one. And as gain changes, it goes off to infinity. But clearly, it does not meet the steady state error of 0.1 for a unit ramp input and MP less than 0.5. The output for the step response for this system is given in this form. So to obtain the lag compensator, we will choose the controller transfer function or the compensator transfer function as K into tau S plus one divided by beta into tau S plus one. So apparently it looks very similar to the lead compensator, except in the case of lead compensator, this alpha here instead of beta was between zero and one. However, for a lag compensator, beta is always greater than one. So in order to obtain the desired steady state error of 0.1 to the ramp input, again, we can see that K can be 10. And then we need to choose beta to get the desired phase margin. So we choose a zero at omega equals 0.1 and a pole at omega equals 0.01. And this gives a phase margin of 50 degrees. We can calculate that. So the lag compensator for this system to meet the requirements is D of S is 10 into 10 S plus one divided by 100 S plus one. So as you can see, this is very different from the lead compensator. Okay, so what happens when you use such a lag compensator? The crossover frequency is lowered. And in a sense, this is very similar to an integral control. So basically what you can see is this is 10 S plus one. Here it is 100 S plus one. So this is like much, the denominator is much larger, okay? So it is sort of like a integral control. If actually if the numerator was not there and then it would be 10 divided by some 100 S sort of approximately, then it would be a pure integral control, but this is similar to an integral control. So we can now plot the root locus with this lag compensator, which is D of S is 10 into 10 S plus one divided by 100 S plus one for this G of S. And then you can see that the root locus looks like this. So it is a clearly a different root locus. So we have originally S equals zero and S equals minus one. And then we have introduced one zero and one pole. And then the root locus now looks completely different. Okay. So now we can check whether it again meets our requirements of steady state error and peak overshoot. So first let us look at the Bode diagram. 
So you can see that the gain margin is infinity at PM equals 45.2 degrees at 0.71 radians per second uh, for this. So this is looks like it is acceptable. Okay, so we want the phase margin more than 45 degrees. To eventually and finally check whether it meets our requirement, we give this system with this controller, with this lag compensator, a step input. So if you give a step input here, the output looks like this. This is the output curve. And again, you can see it is less than 1.25. You have to believe me, this is less than 1.25, the peak, as well as the steady state error is less or less than 0 0.1. However, the plot looks slightly different than the with the lead compensator. And I am showing you both side by side. So for the lead compensator, this is what the plot was. The lead compensator was 10 into 0 0.5 S plus 1 divided by 0 0.1 S plus 1, whereas the lag compensator is 10 into 10 S plus 1 divided by 100 S plus 1. So in this case, there is a little bit of oscillation. Here, the plot is, looks different. But both of them meet the requirement of a steady state error of 0 0.1 to unit ramp input and peak overshoot less than 0 0.25. Let us now look at a slightly more complicated system. So what we have is a plant whose transfer function is given by 6 divided by S plus 1 into S plus 2 into S plus 3. Okay. So if you go back and see the state space approach, which we had studied earlier, this, has, well, this was one of the plants which we had discussed as an example. Now we have this plant. The input is U of S, output is Y of S, and we have a controller. So what the goal in this example is that we want the desired closed loop poles to be at S equals minus 1.5 plus minus 2J. So this is the dominant second order system which we want. Okay, So we want to design a controller whose dominant second order system or dominant second order poles are at this place, minus 1.5 plus minus 2J. We can plot the root locus of this system okay, of the uncompensated system. So we have just some gains which are increasing. And then we have three poles at minus one, minus two, and minus three. So as the gain changes, the root locus goes off to like this. You can see one branch goes off to the right half plane. And there is one branch which goes off to minus infinity. So this system can be unstable for some values of gains. So if the gain is chosen such that it crosses this imaginary line here, then it is unstable. And this is a plot which is derived from MATLAB. It shows lots of things. It shows what is the root locus. It also shows you what are the damping values. And the circles are the natural frequencies. So this is a, this point here has natural frequency of 6 and damping of 0.74. Okay, not so important, but MATLAB is a powerful tool which gives you lots of information. We can also find what is the response of this system to a step input. And the response look good, that it goes off to settles at 1. It looks like with zero error. Okay, it will be stable because it is like e to the power minus 1t and e to the power minus 2t and sort of like e to the power minus 3t. So all the poles are in the left half plane, so hence it will be stable. So what we want is to design a controller whose desired dominant poles are at minus 1.5 plus minus 2J. Okay, so how do we do go about doing it? So we pick one of the poles, which is minus 1.5 plus 2J. Remember the root locus is symmetric about the real axis or about the x-axis. The angle contribution at this point at S1 
we can find the angle from the different poles. So th these are minus 104.036, then this is minus 75.96 and minus 53.13. So the total angle is minus 233. So we want at to be stable to meet the requirements we want we should be adding a controller should be adding a phase of 53.13 because it should be minus 180 degrees the angle at any point in the s plane for this transfer function for the root locus to go through that point the angle should satisfy that 180 degree criteria so in order to achieve this additional phase angle let us choose the lead compensator of the form k into s plus a divided by s plus b s plus c divided by s plus d so note that this is slightly different from what we did earlier in the previous case it was like s plus a divided by s plus b into k so that also works however it turns out that if you have a lead compensator in which there are two of these then the performance is better okay you can try it out yourself with these two only or this four of them so now we are adding two zeros and two poles then we arbitrarily choose a as minus 4 b as minus 15 and c as minus 5 you can again play around with these numbers but it turns out that this is a good set of numbers to start with now the angle contribution at s1 which is this point minus 1.5 plus 2j and from everywhere except from s equals d okay except the pole at s equals minus d so the angle contribution is the angle contribution of this term plus this term evaluated as s1 and you will see this is minus 173.15 so for the pole at s equals minus d we need to add a smaller angle which is minus 6.85 then it will make it 180 degrees okay so then the angle contribution is exactly minus 180 degrees and we then see that the root locus will pass through s1 it will also pass through the conjugate because the root locus is always symmetric so how do i add this contribution of minus 6.85 by addition of a pole okay so this can be done by geometry so we have minus s1 is minus 1.5 plus 2j so the imaginary distance is 2 and let's pick a pole at some point d which is here and we want this angle to be 6.85 so what does this we get that x is equal to 2 cot of 6.85 degrees because this is 2 and this is 6.85 degrees and we want to find out this distance where is the pole so initially it is at 1.5 and then we want to go some further to the left to get this 6.85 degrees so you can calculate x and we'll see that x is 16.65 approximately so this distance d is x plus 1.5 because originally itself it was at 1.5 so this is like 18.5 so the final form of the compensator is remember we had chosen this as 4 5 15 so this is s plus 18.5 and the gain for this is 31.40 so now we have a design in which the lead compensator has two zeros and two poles and again value which is 31.4 so the controller transfer function or the compensator transfer function is 31.4 into s plus 4 divided by s plus 15 into s plus 5 divided by s plus 18.15 and we can again plot the root locus for this plant and then you can see that the root locus is now much more complicated we have minus one minus two minus three these were the open loop poles 
and then we have added two zeros and two poles okay and then if you plot the root locus you can see it is going through exactly the two points which we want which is minus 1.5 plus minus 2j so this compensator has now achieved these two dominant poles okay so why is it dominant because all other poles are much to the left okay so one branch is going this way one branch is going this way so and this other branch is going this way so the two dominant poles are these two and you can clearly see from this figure we can then look at what is the step response of this system so g of s is given by this the controller or the compensator transfer function is given by whatever i showed you last time and if you give a step input the output looks like this so here again there is some small overshoot but and there is some small steady state error but this is what the dominant second order system is supposed to give so this sort of completes the design of a compensator for this third order system so in summary the root locus based controller designed to meet dominant closed loop requirements can be achieved so we need to change the shape of the root locus by adding a lead or a lag compensator by basically adding zeros and poles and this compensator is required to meet the phase margin and the steady state error requirements the lead compensator is sort of similar to a derivative control the lag compensator is sort of similar to a integral control they are not exactly derivative and integral control but they sort of function like that and then we can play around with the location of the poles and zeros to meet the requirements and i have showed you two kinds of requirements in one which is the steady state error and the peak overshoot was given and then for another example i said that we want to achieve these two dominant second order poles and in both cases i showed you how to design a compensator which will achieve those things most of these things can be also done using computer tools okay nowadays most design can be done using very sophisticated computer tools and again matlab provides these tool boxes for control system design this root locus based controller design or using lead and lag compensator is again applicable to siso systems